welcome to Proven's Garage. If you watched the last episode, you saw that we got the suspension done on Maricart. Well, we got the rear suspension done on Maricart. And since the last episode, I've gone in and finished welding everything in the back. Um, still have a lot to do up in the front, but got everything finished welded back here. I added some more little tabs um, to strengthen up where my A-arms connect. And as you can see down here, I have a piece of exhaust laying on the ground because I'm too impatient and this thing needs to get fired up pretty soon. So in this episode, we're gonna work on some exhaust and then we're also gonna start working on the front suspension and hopefully have this thing sitting on all four wheels by the end of this episode. All right, so here is the stock exhaust with how this all sits how it sat on the motorcycle. Um, I just don't like it at all. So I understand that we should probably keep a collector where the pipes cross over into each other just to level out the back pressure. But this piece here is just kind of ridiculous. Like comes down, does a hard 180, comes back, hits a collector, and then out to the exhaust. So I'm gonna make this much more free flowing um, I'm going to start with cutting off this tab and I'm going to try to keep that as intact as possible because I'm probably going to reuse that for mounting this thing. And then with this end, I think I'm just going to hack all that off and make it all brand new and flow a lot better. And with the Power Commander, um, you can add on uh, 202 sensors in your exhaust. They're, they design a kit for a V-twin. Um, so then you can actually tune uh, based off the O2 sensors, which is gonna make it run way better. So I think we just do that. Just kind of make it all brand new. So let's do it. So we're gonna get these tacked together. And to do that with my TIG, I basically just do a little flash. And so I'll hold this together and just pop it. And you'll see it, it just makes like a little dot, a nice little tack. And then we'll do that in like, like four or five spots. Um, definitely not gonna fully weld anything yet because it's probably gonna need to come back apart a couple times so we get what we want. So let's do it. That was it, it's a little pop. And you can see, there's just one nice little tack there. All right, so we got a bunch of little tacks on there. Flew through a little bit there, which happens sometimes when your joint is not super tight, so you can really only do this if your joint is nice and tight, uh, but sometimes you get a little bit of a gap and then it'll happen. No big deal. We can fill it with some filler rod. So let's go get this on there and uh, start seeing what we're going to do with the rest of this. Well, mistake number one, I got a little flare on the end of this, which meets up to the other pipe pretty nice. and. Uh, can't really get this back on. So I gotta cut it and tack it back together already. Now, I just like doing dumb stuff so that you don't have it. Hold on to your hats, boys and girls! The stackers. The sousaphone. The ew. 
the paper clip, the infinity exhaust, the chopper. Wait, you know, I, I kind of like this one. No, maybe not. Well, Bob George, I think we've done it. All right, so we got the exhaust where I'm just gonna stop for right now because I kind of want to fire it up, just open exhaust and see how ridiculous it is. So I moved on to making the front A-arms. And as you can see, I did the same as last time, if you saw the last video, uh, set up a jig on my table, cut out all the pieces, and I've got all of them tacked together. So I'm about to get those finished welded, and then I got about seven years of lathe work to do uh, to make the little inserts for my heim joints. And uh, after that, pick back up and uh, start getting these things installed. Well, all right. I have been just going at it with this stuff. I've probably been on the lathe for, I don't know, uh, seven or eight days. Not really, but probably eight hours of lathe work that I just finished up. And so we got all the front A-arms done. They're all welded up. Got inserts in the front and the back because these are gonna take three heim joints per A-arm. I made some spacers for the heim joints that are going to connect to the spindles. And I'll talk about these spindles in a second. Um, but the spacers were basically uh, just to increase the amount of travel that was possible. Uh, if we look at what would happen if, if there was no spacer in there, our travel would be very limited. Like I'd probably have a few inches of suspension travel with the spacers though we have way more potential travel. Without, with. So those took a while. I turned all these pieces down uh, from one inch uh, bar. But that's all done. We need to make eight of them. All those are done. All the inserts are done. Uh, they're all threaded so the arm joints can go in. And we, instead of making spindles for the front, ended up coming across a whole bunch of parts for ATVs and buggies. It was just a big conglomeration of parts. Some were good and some weren't, um, but it was a ton of stuff. I got a really good deal on it. So I ended up getting some spindles with it, several sets of spindles. Um, these ones were in really good shape, got good brakes, good rotors. The bolt pattern, however, was not what I needed. So I am using wheels off of a Polaris and the bolt pattern that came on these hubs was for a Can-Am. So luckily there was a set of hubs that had an adapter in it that I was able to take off of those um, and then just weld it on to these hubs. I don't know if you can see that there, but I welded on the back and I cut the studs off of this set of hubs and welded through each hole, so I am not worried at all about those coming off. Another modification I had to do to these hubs, um, they were set up for ball joints, and I'm using heim joints, and they're also a 3 8 bolt, and I'm using half inch heim joints, so I took out the little spacers that went in here, and I made my own, so they would hold half inch. So as you can see, we are pretty much ready to install this. The only other thing I got to do is make some tabs to connect these heim joints to the frame in the front and then some tabs to mount the shocks. So we're pretty... What? Oh, I almost forgot. We got to tell you about our sponsor for today's video. <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to go make some stuff and then we'll uh, get this stuff mounted.
So with the bottom tabs, I notched them out because they need to meet up to this bottom rail. But the top tabs can stay squared on the end because they're just going to meet up to the vertical rail here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this tacked on and then I'll make sure it's level and then we'll get the other one tacked on and get the spindle attached. settings for my shock. So if I want to ride it on like a road course or something, I can go to a lower setting so it sits a little lower. And then off-road, obviously I'm going the highest setting possible. So I'm going to go ahead and get these uh, tacked on here. And uh, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that Maricart's fully suspended. I think it looks pretty cool. So I just got this seat sitting in here for right now. This isn't where it's actually going to go. It's actually going to be a little bit further forward because I'm putting the seat behind it. But we're pretty close. So next time we're going to hook up some steering. I'm going to start getting some pedals made. And then I think we're going to have to fire that motor up and see how ridiculous it sounds with open exhaust. But I'm pumped. We're super close. We're going to be ripping this thing soon and it's going to be awesome. So thanks for stopping by. I hope we we'll catch you next time on 